Hello, word nerds, and welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast, and I am me. Me is Spencer. Ken is me. My name is Spencer. Um, this You can watch this on the YouTube. You can check out all the audio podcast platform places to check out this show. Whatever is good for you, whatever you like is great with me. Just listen and watch my show. Um, this episode, uh, it's F38, and I was trying to get a guest on the episode. I, I reached out to a few people. We were not able to make it happen, so I'm just going to do this myself, which... Let me just say, is this this episode deserves a guest. Uh, the very first word deserves a guest. So I just want you to know I am not the best person to be talking about this, but I will do my best. Uh, okay, the first word in this episode is the first form of the word fat, F-A-T. A word that has a lot of a lot of meaning behind it. Uh, positive, negative uh, depends on the person. Um, there's there's just a lot of connotations to this word. Uh, so this is an adjective from before the 12th century. Oh, I should say I am recording this out of order, but um, I I have a music stand in front of me. You can't see it. It's right out of frame. But I I had one in the next office over, and I thought, oh, maybe I could put the book on the music stand so it's much closer to my face because I'm standing now and my eyes are going because I'm old. I'm I'm on I'm old now. Um, okay, so back to the word. Uh, this is an adjective from before the 12th century. Number one is notable for having an unusual amount of fat. We have some sub-definitions. 1A, the synonym is plump. 1B, the synonym is obese. And 1C, and there's also a 1D, but 1C is talking about a meat animal. So I'm guessing we're talking about cows and pigs and uh, probably chickens and turkeys and uh, maybe fish, other things. Uh, so the definition for this one about a meat animal is fattened for market. It's a fat pig because they were fattened for market. Okay. Um, 1D is talking about food and the synonyms are oily and greasy because food that is fatty often has, you know, oily things and greasy stuff, and it tastes so good, but it is so not healthy for you. Um, let's see, is this, I, I think this is probably a great place to talk a little bit about this word, um, because, you know, we've got those synonyms, plump and obese, and lots and lots of other words that people will use, uh, in addition to these. Um, I guess, First off, I just have to send you to another podcast or two podcasts. Um, the The Allusionist um, had on a guest, Aubrey, and I, I'm blanking on her last name at the moment, um, but she had two episodes where uh, Helen, the host, and Aubrey talked about this word and lots and lots of things around this word. And so I would say, first first off, just go check out those podcasts, those episodes. I will put the links in the show notes. Um, but, so Aubrey has her own podcast called Maintenance Phase, Maintenance Phase, um, where she, she hosts with another person. Um, and I, I guess I should probably read, like, what it actually says about this show. Um, let's check out this one. Uh, is there a... Is there a uh, just a just a, a main thing that says about what this what this show is? Uh, Aubrey Gordon and Michael Hobbs, those are the hosts. I don't know what their sort of elevator pitch of this show is exactly, but um, I've listened to a couple episodes and they dig deep into research and talk about some pretty important things um, and also have fun doing it. So I would check out both of those podcasts, Maintenance Phase and The Illusionist, specifically the episodes about the word fat on The Illusionist. And I, I, I don't feel like I'm the right person to talk about this. Um, 
what what to say? What can I say? Um, as I said, there's there's a lot of meaning behind this word. So I mean, first of all, just don't call somebody fat. If if they self identify as fat, then they can choose to use the word or not. But it is not up to you to 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 call anybody by any sort of name or adjective. Uh, it's just, it's just mean. It's just mean. So I just don't do it. Um, I'm kind of at a loss for words because I was really hoping to have a conversation with somebody about this and, um, it's, it's just me. Um, there, there are so many, so many levels to, to this. Um, I, I will shout out the Weird Al song called Fat, which is a parody of Michael Jackson's Bad. And I am actually very curious to know how people uh, view that song. Um, is it is it um, is it disrespectful in, in these days? Um, I think this song is from the probably the early '90s. I don't remember when that album came out. Um, it, it, do people have a hard time with that song, or is it just a funny joke song? I don't really know what people think about that anymore. So if you have feelings about that or just this word in general, I truly would like you to reach out to me and, you know, check out the show notes. There's lots of ways to get in contact with me and tell me what you think. Um, because, you know, this is one of those sort of problematic words uh, or potentially problematic, depending on the situation. And uh, I, a lot of people have opinions about it. Uh, if I think of anything else to say, I'll say it, but I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far, especially, um, cause I'm, I'm not the best person to talk about this. All right. Now we're going to go on to 2A. Uh, this is well filled out and the synonyms are thick and big. And, uh, I, I don't think we're necessarily talking about a person here. The example is a fat book. That book is very filled out. It's thick and big. The book that I am reading from is a, it's kind of a fat book. Oh, you, you probably saw my little post-its pop up there. Yep, they're barely out of frame. Um, and so, yes, there are, uh, sometimes there are Bibles that are fat books. Um, there are uh, textbooks, you know, like science or math textbooks are sometimes really fat because they're so well filled out. 2B is full in tone and quality. The synonym is rich, as in the example, a gorgeous fat bass voice. Uh, that is a quote from Irish Digest. And so they were, they were, I guess, given a review about somebody who was singing in a beautiful bass voice, which I do not have. So if I go real low, maybe, maybe I'm a baritone. I think I'm more in the tenor or alto region. So I, I don't have a gorgeous, fat bass sound. La, 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 la. Uh, now we have 2C. Well-stocked, as in a fat larder. And I don't know what a larder is. The problem with this music stand is that it's blocking my keyboard. <laughs> Where are you, keyboard? I literally have to, I should probably keep like one hand on it. So if I need to find it, what is a larder? It's a cool area for storing food prior to use. Oh, interesting. How have I never heard of a larder? Okay. Uh, so yeah, a fat larder is well stocked. It's full to the brim of stuff. 2D. The synonyms are prosperous and wealthy, as in grew fat on the war. That is a quote from Time time what was growing fat on the war grew fat on the war um well uh, they say that um during wartime some some people some countries maybe companies get very wealthy they make a lot of money and so uh yes uh there there are probably people and companies who have gotten fat on the war any war 2e being substantial and impressive as in a fat bank account. My bank account is so fat because I put in five dollars. Uh, we all would like a fat bank account. It's like it's like our wallet is filled, filled with bills. 
Uh, but many, many people, especially here in America, do not have fat bank accounts, and they are struggling paycheck to paycheck, which they shouldn't be. They're probably working two to three jobs just to keep their head above water, if that. And that's a problem, and I don't like it. So everybody deserves a fat bank account, or let's just get rid of money altogether. 3A. Richly rewarding or profitable, as in a fat part in a movie. I want a fat part in a movie. It's very rewarding and profitable. Um, could could it be a, could a fat part in a movie be something a little bit different than richly rewarding or profitable? Maybe it's a juicy role. An oily, greasy, juicy roll. Ooh, I mean, it maybe didn't make me much money, and it wasn't very rewarding, but ooh, it was so fun. I guess that is rewarding. Huh, okay. Also is in, we have another example, a fat contract. That contract is rewarding and profitable. Okay, there's a lot of, lot of money, a lot of stuff in that contract. 3B, practically non-existent. As in, a fat chance, no, you, it's a fat chance that you're going to have that juicy fat role in that movie. No, no, no. It's practically non-existent. There's like basically no chance that you're ever going to do it. Number four. The synonyms are productive and fertile or fertile, as in, a fat year for crops. So those crops, they had a real good year. They were really productive. They got really good soil, and they got lots of rain and good good water, whatever amount that they need, and other food. Oh, it was so... They didn't get hit by bad storms or earthquakes or anything like that. And so those crops, oh, they got so, so juicy. Those corn cobs, they were juicy and fat kernels and popping all over the place. Who came up? Who figured out popcorn. Number five, the synonyms are stupid and foolish. And I think that there is a very clear connection to, to, to people calling larger people fat and also calling them stupid and foolish at the same time. I think that there, there, there is a connection in their brains like, oh, you're fat, you're stupid. That doesn't make any sense. You you cannot, you not, can't compare somebody's physical size to their intelligence or whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, something else that I thought of, which I do believe was mentioned in the Illusionist episodes, was um, there's a, I guess it's a common misconception that fat people are unhealthy. Uh, it's not necessarily true. Aubrey talked a fair amount about this, and I think that was really, really important. Um, they, I don't know, my brains just sort of went off in another direction. I got to bring it back. Um, so, you know, even if somebody is, uh, maybe, uh, trying to lose weight, exercising, dieting, whatever it is, and maybe they can't lose the weight, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that, they are unhealthy in any way. Uh, they might just be perfectly fine. So, and also, just let them do, let them live their life. Come on. Um, I, I hope, I really, really hope that I'm not, not saying bad things, wrong things. So, I apologize. Um, you know, feel free to, to let me know. But that is always my last, last, uh, goal. It's not a goal at all. That's, that's the last thing that I want to be doing. Okay, let's move on to number six. It is being swollen, as in, got a fat lip from the fight. When I was little, I got a fat lip from a bee sting. And luckily, I was too young to remember it. But uh, yes, being swollen. I got a... I, I, not too long ago, I had a bee sting sort of under my eye, and that got a little fat. Anytime you get stung or, or punched, I guess, it's going to get a bit fat. Number seven is talking about a baseball pitch, and it is easy to hit. That's the definition. So I guess if you, uh, if you pitch a ball, a f would, it, would you call it a fat ball? I never heard of a baseball being called a fat ball. 
but um, it's just easy to hit. Fatness is a noun. So, what is the etymology? Uh, it's from Old English, fat, from phyton, which means to cram. Mm, interesting. Akin to the Old High German, phasit, phasit, which means fat. So, yeah, I guess it's the idea of just cramming stuff, stuff in there. Uh, cramming your uh, your larder with uh, canned goods and water and maybe gas and oil and all those sorts of things. Uh, cramming. So that that's where the word comes from. That's where it comes from. Now, what is the sound effect that I'm going to make today? Um, hmm. Let's just do something completely unrelated and go... Next, we have the second form of fat. This is a transitive verb from before the 12th century. It means to make fat, and the synonym is fatten, F-A-T-T-E-N, which I guess probably comes up later. I've already recorded it, but I don't remember. Let's see. I do not... Yes, there it is. There it is. So, yes, you're just making... You're probably talking about that that meat animal is that what we could yes they were called meat animals fattening them up fat so you you could say fat that pig or fatten that pig i think we use fatten more now we have the third form of fat it is a noun from the 14th century we got a number of definitions here number one animal tissue Consisting chiefly of cells distended with greasy or oily matter. Okay. Consisting chiefly of cells distended. So that means the cells are filled. They are crammed, crammed with greasy or oily matter. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. So it's not the muscle. It's not the tendons, the ligaments, the cartilage. It's not any of those things. It's this other stuff that we pretty much all have. Oh, I know I got it. I got a lot of this stuff. And um, and uh, what else? What else to say about that? I don't know. Let's go on to 2A. Oily or greasy matter. Making up the bulk of adipose tissue and often abundant in seeds. Now, where are we? What is this context? Oily or greasy matter? Are we talk, we're not talking about it in an animal because it's abundant in seeds. What what sort of fat is this? I'm confused. Well, we have 2B, which is huge. 2B, this is a very fat definition. If we're gonna go that route. Uh, this is any of various compounds of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that are glycerides of fatty acids, are the chief constituents of plant and animal fat, are a major class of energy-rich food, and are soluble in organic solvents, solvents but not in water. Uh, anything that has to do with nutrition kind of hurts my brain. Um, I mean, I understand that certain foods have fats. You know, they say that avocado has fats, but they're the good fats. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and I will never train in those things. Um, it's it's easier to understand, I guess, when you're talking about meat. Um, but there are, there are foods that have fats in them. And, uh, you know, it's these carbons and hydrogens and oxygens and gly glycerides and other things you want i guess you want a little bit of it maybe to a certain extent i'm not really sure don't quote me on that maybe i should put a link in the show notes just for the these all these different types of fats i'm sure there's something out there there's probably some information on the internet to see a solid or semi-solid fat as distinguished from an oil it's different than an oil Similar but different, but it's, uh, I guess the main thing is the oil is liquidy and the fat is solid or semi-solid. So just, just think about that. Number three, the best or richest part of what? What are we talking about? The best part or the richest part? Um, you know, if you get a ribeye steak, uh, the, you know, they, those are, I think the fattier versions of steaks, um, 
T-bone, filet mignon, blah, 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 blah. And so they have more fat and they are, uh, so I think they, they are less healthy. Uh, they are cheaper, but they taste so rich, so rich. Um, I don't eat those anymore, so I can't give you really any more better information than that. But we're not necessarily talking about steaks here. It's just the best or richest part is the fat. Ooh, that part of the podcast when he was talking about steaks, that was the fatty part of the episode. Number four, the synonym is obesity. Just that. Number five, something in excess. The synonym is superfluity. Superfluity. Is that how you say that word? Superfluity. Superfluity. There's an example. Trim the fat from the news operation. That is a quote from Ray Olson. So what is this fat? It's just the excess. It's this, the stuff that you don't need. Keep it short and sweet, stupid. Um, I, I always try to, you know, sometimes I'll like write an email and then I'm like, oh, that's a lot. I think I can simplify it. Let's cut the fat out of there. It's, it's unnecessary. It's excessive. Fatless. Fatless is an adjective. And no additional etymology, so we are done with those words. Pretty much, we're going to go... Now we have fatal. F-A-T-A-L. Fatal attraction. Just fatal. Adjective from the 14th century. Number one is obsolete. And the synonym is fated. F-A-T-E-D which that will be in the next episode, which I also have not recorded yet, but I will probably just do that on my own. So fated is also fatal. So I think of fated as like related to your fate. What is your fate? That thing, that thing in your life is going to happen or did happen, so it was fated. And I guess back in the day, they would say it was fatal. But now it has a new meaning. Like what else? Number two. Well, this is different. Or if this is similar to number one. The synonym is fateful. As in a fatal hour. A fatal hour is also called a fateful hour. Oh, that was a very important hour in their life. So it was fatal. They sound similar. Fatal and fateful. Uh, but the fatal in this context is not at all how I think of this word at all. Number three, A, of or relating to fate. Okay, we got more fate stuff. Of or relating to fate. Makes sense. I never thought about it that way. Number three, B, resembling fate in proceeding according to a fixed sequence. Resembling fate in proceeding according to a fixed sequence. Wait, what are we talking about here? It resembles fate. It resembles the thing that is meant to happen, that will happen. It resem Resembling fate in proceeding. So like what comes beforehand? Maybe proceeding though. According to a fixed sequence. There is a fixed sequence of things. So I guess if it's fixed, it's already planned out, then, there, then it's fate that chooses what is next because it's already been planned out. I don't really know what we're talking about here, though. 3C. Determining one's fate. Determining one's fate is fatal. I did not expect there to be so many things related to fate. This is fascinating. Uh, number 4A. Here we go. Causing death. This is absolutely how I think of this. Causing death. That, that thing is fatal. Because, see now... There's clearly a connection between death and fate. Huh. Okay, interesting. 4B is bringing ruin. Uh, as in the example, a fatal attraction to gambling. So uh, somebody has an attraction to gambling, and unfortunately, it will likely bring about their ruin. Maybe they won't literally die, but they may lose a whole bunch of money and stuff. And so that is why it is fatal. 4C is causing failure. 
as in a fatal design flaw. Oh, that thing you that share you, that there was a fatal design flaw when you didn't put legs on the chair or you only put two legs on the chair. That is a fatal flaw. Somebody toppled over and they didn't die, but they got hurt. So that is a problem. The thing failed. A synonym is the word deadly. Yep, deadly. So, I mean, yes, this is literally just from the Latin fatalis or fatum, which means fate. So, your death, if something is fatal that causes death, then that was your fate? I mean, that's getting into a whole other conversation, which I guess I might have to have with myself in the next episode. But, um... Your, your death is inevitable. It will happen. So that one we know is your fate. That's the one thing that we all can predict just how or when it happens. We don't know. Okay, I'm back. Um, anyway, interesting that fatal has to do with fate. Fatalism. Noun from 1678. It is a doctrine that events are fixed in advance so that human beings are powerless to change them. Let's just stop right there. This also has to do with fate. Fatalism. I would have thought it had to do with death in some way, which it kind of sort of does as we've been talking about. But no, it's literally about the idea that everything is fixed in advance. Your Everything is planned out. Not, see, that's the thing. You can't say planned out because that means that that gives you the feeling that something, someone has planned it out, but what it, it's more generic than that. What it really means is that based on what happened before, let's see, if you're watching the video, this is before for you, so I'm going to, I got to flip it in my mind. Whatever happened before predicts what will happen next. And I'm in the process of reading a book called Determined, which I haven't read for months because I've been too busy, but that's that's what it talks about. So I guess is the writer of that book a, a fatalist? They 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 agree with fatalism, but what else does this have to say? It says also a belief in or attitude determined by this doctrine. Okay, and yes, a fatalist is a noun. So no additional etymology. We know, oh, there's more words, though. Fatalistic is an adjective. And fatalistically, fatalistically, that's an adverb. So, yes, it's just the idea that events, events are fixed in advance so that human beings are powerless to change them. Well, but what if I chose to go left instead of right? When I'm with people, they're all going right, and what if I go left? Well, it you think that you're changing the thing. You think you're changing your fate, but really, that was fated all along. This is the stuff that boggles my mind. And when you look at it from a scientific standpoint, it kind of makes sense. It, it, it There is some sense, and I have to finish the book to have it make more sense or less sense. But the argument that this author was making is that you are where you are. Everything is where it is now, literally because of what happened beforehand. And it's really hard to argue with that. It's really hard to argue with that. Okay, am I a fatalist? I don't know, maybe. Now we have fatality. Fatality. This is a noun from the 15th century. Number 1A is the quality or state of causing death or destruction. In the that wonderfully classic, crazy, disturbing street fighting game called Mortal Kombat, they all had their fatalities, which of course I, as a as a child growing up in the 90s, 80s and 90s, uh, this was this was a very fun game to play. I, I didn't play a lot of it, but I had friends who played and I would watch and it was like, oh, it's their fatality. Oh my God, it's so bloody, blah, 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 blah. That was a good time. Um, one B for fatality 
is the quality or condition of being destined for disaster. Whew. So wait, how do you use this in context? How do you use this in a sentence? The quality or condition of being destined for disaster. Oh, that's a fatality. That, uh, that Exxon boat crash or Titanic boat crash, that, that was a fatality because it was destined for disaster from the beginning. Number two, something established by fate. Nothing to do with death there, just fate. Uh, 3A, the synonym is the number one definition for the word fate, which is in the next episode. 3B, the synonym is fatalism, which is the idea that everything is uh, determined. Um, and so fatality, I guess, is just another word for fatalism. All right, number four, the agent or agency of fate. So what is that? Is that like the agent of fate is the thing that brings the fate, the, the thing that brings a, how, how to word this? The agent of fate is the thing that happens to bring about your fate or the fate of whatever. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think of another way to word that, but I'm not so good with the words. Um, okay, number 5A is death resulting from a disaster. That is a fatality. And 5B, the th one that experiences a fatal outcome. So the, the person who experiences the fatal outcome is the fatality? Um, and what is this fatal outcome? Is it the death outcome or is this something just related to fate? I don't know. Could be either one. All right, um, let's see. Any additional etymology? No, pretty much the same thing. It's all from the word fate. So now we're going to go to... Fatally? I think that is how you pronounce it. doesn't actually tell me. Fatal plus an L-Y. Adverb from the 15th century. Number one, in a way determined by fate. That thing happened fatally. When he walked across the street... He walked across the street fatally because it was determined by fate. I mean, you can literally, if everything is determined in that way, then you can literally describe every single thing that happens as being done fatally because it was determined by fate. Usually, though, we're talking about a bigger thing. Oh, and when he crossed the street and got hit by a bus, that, that hit by the bus was, it happened fatally. Oh, and maybe the bus would be the agent of fate, so the bus would be the fatality. Number two, in a manner suggesting fate or an act of fate, as to a, in a manner resulting in death. The synonym is mortally. Uh, as in, we have an example, fatally wounded. So they were wounded so much that they died. That, that wound uh, made the body uh, result in death. That's what it is. A lot of, lot of bad, sad stuff in this episode. I'm so sorry about that. And I'm talking very uppity about it. But, you know, they're just words. And we all have to get more comfortable with death, I think. Uh, okay, now where are we? We are on now to B. Beyond repair. That's the definition uh, the synonym is irrevocably, irrevocably. That clock is broken beyond repair because you threw it off of the cliff and we can't fix it. It's, uh, it's, uh, the, the, the clock was destroyed fatally. Okay. Number two C in a manner resulting in ruin or evil as in it is fatally easy to pass off our prejudices as our opinions. That is a quote from W.F. Hambly. What was W.F. saying? It is fatally easy. Okay, let's replace that with another word that we know. Um, it is in a manner resulting in ruin or evil. It is fatally easy to pass off our prejudices as our opinions. Huh, huh, huh. I'm, I'm having a hard time with this one is what's resulting in 
ruin or evil? Is it is it evil to to pass off our prejudices as our opinions? Hmm. Yeah. My 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 brain. My brain. Oh my brain. Let's move on to 2D in a manner that cannot be easily registered, as in thinks he is fatally attractive. That is a quote from J.W. Crutch with a K. Crutch. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I read it wrong. Um, in a manner that cannot be easily resisted. That's a very different thing. I definitely read over that way too quickly. So, he thinks, oh, it thinks she is fatally attractive. Wow, I just screwed up all those words. Thinks she is fatally attractive. So, that is done in a manner that cannot be easily resisted. She, because she is so attractive, he cannot resist her. You can, buddy. You can resist her. You can just, just be cool. Just because she's super hot doesn't mean you need to take an action, depending on the action. Okay, great. Um, anyway, that was interesting ways to use this word that I was so not aware of. <laughs> Next we have Fata Morgana. I think that is how it is said. It is two words. The first word is Fata, F-A-T-A. And the second word is Morgana. This is a noun from 1801, and the synonym is mirage. Oh, it's like it's like a hallucination. What's that mirage off in the distance in the desert? Oh, it's an ice cream stand? I would like to go visit that, Fata Morgana. Uh, so this is an Italian phrase, I guess. It literally means Morgan Le Fay. Who was a sorceress of Arthurian legend? So I'm guessing that this Morgan de Fay character um, maybe would would show mirages to to maybe Arthur. Oh look, here's a thing, but it's not real. But it's a thing. You think it's real, but it's not real. It's a mirage. It is a Fata Morgana. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Is that so? Is Fata Morgana her name? Morgan Le Fay. Translated into Italian, is Fata Morgana? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Next we have Fatback. One word noun from 1903. It is the strip of fat from the back of a hog carcass, ugh, usually cured by drying and salting. The very specific portion of a dead pig that people like to eat. <laughs> Fat body is next. Two words, noun from 1869. Um, this is a fatty tissue, especially of nearly mature insect larvae, that serves as a food reserve. Huh. Fat body, a fatty tissue, especially of nearly mature insect larvae. So do these nearly mature insect larvae hold on to this fat body, this fatty tissue, um, because um, they're, it's, a, it's a food reserve. So maybe, maybe they're, they're doing their transformation, their metamorphosis into their next form, their adult form, like a caterpillar to a butterfly, and they need that fat body to give them energy and sustenance while they're going through that transformation. You know, caterpillars... They're very hungry. They're, they are the hungriest of caterpillars, the hungry, hungry caterpillars. And they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and they don't stop until they're like, okay, I think it's time to transform. It's transformation time. <laughs> okay, next one. Fat cat, two words, noun from 1928. Oh, interesting that this word was coined right before the, the stock market crash in the states number one a for fat cat a wealthy contributor to a political campaign fund they got a lot of money their their wallets are filled so their their wallets are fat number one b a wealthy and privileged person 
wealthy and pri- just any one of those wealthy and privileged people are a fat cat. Um, privilege is an interesting word to use there because there's been a lot of discussion about that recently. And, um, you know, just because you have privilege, does that mean would you still be called a fat cat these days? I think it has more to do with the wealth. We got a lot of money. You might be called a fat cat. Um, okay, next is uh, number one C. The synonym is big shot. And I first read that as big snot, which I think is fantastic, but it is not a thing. Big shot. Oh, well, there's such a big shot always showing their, their $100 bills. Number two, a lethargic complacent person a lethargic complacent person they're like i just I, i'm tired can you just make me some food i'm gonna lay here on the couch and watch the movie shows can you please rub my feet i'm a fat cat this this one is more literally talking about like a cat that is fat because they are they're like oh i love being fat i'm just gonna I'm just going to lay in the sun all day and eat some food later and not exercise. So, yeah, this one's not so much about being rich. Uh, Okay, anything else we got now? Fat cat with a hyphen is an adjective. And we have one more word for this episode. We have fat cell. Two words. Cell is C-E-L-L. Noun from 1845. One of the fat-laden cells making up adipose tissue. That's it. It's a very sciencey one. So, now, I'm going to pick a word of the episode. What am I going to pick? I don't know what I'm going to pick. Let's find out what he's going to pick. Today we had fat, 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 fatal, fatalism, fatality, fatally, fata morgana, Fat back, fat body, fat cat, and fat cell. And I I guess maybe I'm going to pick fatalism as the word of the episode. Can Spencer make a different type of song this time? Can he? I don't know. Oh, let's see. Let's see what comes out. Fatalism, fatalism. Fatalism is the idea where everything is determined. I think fatalism makes a lot of sense. And you can't take that away from me. Those are my two cents. Everything has kind of a bluesy, a bluesy sound to it. I don't know. I guess I like that. Okay, that's it for this episode. I I truly do hope that if you have some thoughts on um, any of these words, especially the word fat, please let me know. Um, if somehow... I get get some uh, audio or something from um, one of the people that I reached out to before this episode airs. I will put it in somewhere, but I highly doubt that that will happen because this has to go up in just a handful of days. So until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.